welcome to the new part and let's learn about the group join so we will learn what is group join and then we will create some examples of the group join with the help of query syntax and the method syntax first of all let's understand what is group join group join is applied on two or more data sources based on a key which links both the data sources and produce result in form of groups so basically usually we have multiple data sources or you can say multiple table of a database and both the tables share something common so you can say that the id of one table belongs to the another table then we apply group join on both the tables or both the data sources and if we apply group join then it produce result in the form of groups okay so in the simple words we can say that group join is used to group the result based on a common key let's see in the demo how it works and for that let me open my visual studio so here i am in my visual studio and this is a very basic console application in this console application i have nothing i have just the program class and now i'm going to create two more classes so suppose these are the two classes i have created these two classes the first one is the student class and the second one is the category class okay so in the first class i have three properties id name category id and in the second table category i have two properties first one is the id and the second one is the name okay and what is this category id this is basically the id of the category table so the property of the category class is the category id in the student table and based on these two classes let me create some data source so these are the data sources and let me add the required namespaces using system.collection.genrix and <coughs> so let's understand the data sources once so for the student class i have few records suppose i have five records and for these records i have all the required properties suppose the id is one this is the name and the category id is one so what is the meaning of category id here so category id belongs to the category table which is the second data source okay so in the second data source what is the record for id 1 it is monitor okay so basically what we have done is we have added some categories for all the students so suppose these first and second students belong to the first category it means these two students are the monitors okay uh, third and fourth these two these two students belong to the discipline groups okay you can say the discipline category or discipline groups and the last one so the fifth one this does not belong to any group and this is just a simple student so i have mentioned nothing here you can say as per your convenience you can declare categories as per your convenience so suppose this is the very basic data source and on this data source i need to apply the group join so let's start first of all with the method syntax okay so in the method syntax let me declare a variable method syntax you can give a meaningful name to your variable so to apply it first of all you have to understand that first of all as a outer data source you have to write your categories so basically group join is used to group the things okay and in that grouping the title part basically should be the outer data source so suppose the outer part is categories and to use the group join you have to use the link namespace which is using system dot link and now on the categories we have to apply the group join so let me press dot and then group join okay and before moving ahead let's understand what is group join so let me press f12 over here and you will see that the group join this is the method for the group join there are actually two methods there are two overloaded versions of the group join method and let's see what is the definition so first it has the outer then the inner outer key selector and the inner key selector and at the last we have the result selector and for the overloaded method you can pass the comparer also so let's see it in the practical way and now you have to pass the inner data source and the inner data source is students okay now we have to pass the outer key suppose outer key is cat dot which is the common property id so id of the categories table and the category id of the student table these are the common properties so we for the outer we have to use the id and for the inner what is the inner suppose std std dot 
category id okay so basically this is the outer data source then inner data source then the outer key then the inner key and now we have to write the selector the result selector basically okay now let's do it like this so you have to use a small bracket and in the small bracket first you have to pass the first variable then the second one std and you have to do it like this cat comma std okay and that's it this is this is how you declare your query and at the last to execute this query you can write the to list method or if you are going to use the for each method to show the result then there is no need to use the to list so here in this example i'm going to use the for each loop so let me remove the to list you can even have it there is no problem so for each suppose where item in ms okay so first i will print the category name console dot right line and here item dot so you can say that in the categories we have only the category name so if i use cat dot name you will get only the name of the categories and to declare it and for the separator let me add some arrow symbol over here and then here i will have one more for each loop why this another for each loop this is because the result will be available in the form of groups so from that group first we have to fetch the category name and then we have to fetch all the records which belong to that category and the outer for each loop is for the categories and the inner for each loop is for all the records which belongs to that category and now suppose uh, the variable is c and uh, now item dot students okay so and here we have to print the result console dot right line let's do let's print the name c dot you can see the name that's it now let me press f5 and you can see that we have the results and for the monitors we have two records for the discipline we have another two records and for nothing we have only one records which is just equal to our data source okay so this is how you can apply the group name for the method syntax now if we do all the things in the query syntax let's see how to do that where query syntax so in the query syntax you know you have to start your query from the from keyword so from c in categories okay there is no group join method in the query syntax you simply have to use a join keyword so i'm using join here and join std in students on c dot id equals std dot category id in my previous videos we were talking about the inner join and this is how you apply the inner join but there is a small twist here you have to use one more keyword what is the name of the keyword into so here we have to use into okay and after the into we have to pass the group so basically the coming variable will have all the information of the groups so suppose i'm writing here the students groups like this and then we have to select something so select new suppose c comma s and now we don't have to use this std we have to use the group std group which we have declared after the into keyword so std and group okay and now put everything in the small bracket and at the last to execute this query you can use the to list method if you do not want to use to list method you can simply leave it the way it is and to see the result you have to use the for each loop now okay let me use the same for each loop let me comment this one actually first and then add one more and now we will be using query syntax in the query syntax we have item dot c dot name and then std groups these are the changes based on the query parameters so let's run the query let me press f5
and now you can see that we have the same result for the monitor we have two records for the discipline we have the same two records and for the nothing the last category we have only one record this is how you can group your data based on the common properties by using group join method that's all in this video do subscribe the channel and hit the like button of the video thank you